Okay, Let's take a look at the Fuso starting grid for race 17 at Hidden Valley. Jamie Winkup, as he said, the first time he's been on pole here, but also the first time that Triple Eight have been on pole. It'll be an intriguing battle with McLaughlin. Craig Lowndes, Shane Ben Gisbergen. Ben Gisbergen was fast yesterday. Great job, Garth Tander in P5 alongside the series leader, Mark Winterbottom. Lee Holdsworth, the first of the Erebus Mercedes-Benz cars, did a great job in terms of his speed, the way that that car looks very, very encouraging for this weekend. Dave Reynolds, very fast here last year. He'd be disappointed with 11th. James Moffat makes it five manufacturers in the top 12. Chas Mostert, 13th. Michael Caruso alongside him. Will Davison, partner to Lee Holdsworth, not good enough in terms of one lap and need to improve that car based on the tyre condition and the way that car flows through this race. Todd Kelly further back than he would have liked. David Wall in P20. Dale Wood and Russell Engel. We spoke to Russell Engel earlier and he's always a very, very good hard racer. Look for him to come forward. Robert Dahlgren, Nick Perkat, and at the back of the field, Jack Perkins disappointed with his run in 25th. That's our Fuso starting grid. There's Jamie Wincup. Pole position number 57 in his career to equal the late, great Peter Brock. What a remarkable milestone for him. And he came into the weekend with no pole positions at this venue. So far, he's got two to his credit. That's a great performance. Is his nearest rival in terms of brand and Great battle going on in the championship at the moment because this man's got the ascendancy. He's got a 101 point margin, Mark Winterbottom, and he's got terrific form on the board at this racetrack. A win here last year. Nine of the last 12 races have resulted in a podium for Mark Winterbottom. James Courtney's been quick in practice. It'll quick in qualifying. He'll be a force as well. So you can see the boys behind me as they're coming down onto the grid, weaving tyres. Now, important, you want to try and stay on the racing line, not pick up too much rubbish onto your tyres. Now, this is a hard one, this start, because down this way from the start line, 600 metres, that's as long as anywhere we go. So it's a straight in itself. They're going to be doing 230 kilometres an hour down there with cars in front, behind, beside. And as a driver, when you sit in there, you've got to have what we call really good situational awareness as they grid up. You've got to know what's going on behind, front, side to position your car you need to try and get to the inside before you get down there. This is a big call and very important part of the race. Mark Larkham on the pit wall there. As Tim Slade comes into his start box. It's always a very even start here, Crompo, because the grip, in terms of grip, right side to left side, very, very similar. So it's not really in terms of advantage, either P1 or P2. Being on the inside where Jamie Wickham is, is still the important factor when you get down to the left-hander at turn one. Green flag. Green, green flag. flag. Green flag. In gear. In the starter's hands. Remember, McLaughlin's got a little niggling brake drama. The heat is on again in Darwin, and Wincup makes up the liner. Lowndes goes with him. The birthday boy will grab second spot straight away. McLaughlin didn't get away well. And Van Gisbergen is nicely positioned up the inside to grab third. And does jump. His jump was great, wasn't it? But then it just didn't go on with it, Neil. Scotty's on the outside. He's on the dirty line. He might hang on here. He's going to go side by side with Van Gisbergen through the S's. Oh, Gives man. him the ideal inside line for the right-hander. Van Gisbergen stays with it on the outside but runs out of road. Now he in turn has the insider for the hairpin six in the valley. Van Gisbergen finally in that arm wrestle grabs third. That is great driving those two guys. Through the turn three, four out and breaking area and the way they got in there, they were alongside each other, they didn't make contact. Very high level driving. David Reynolds just outside the top ten trying to find his way around there as well. New curbing down here at turns nine and ten. Changed the way the drivers attack that corner a little. Several different surfaces there, and you, we've talked in years previous about the joins in the track surface that upset the front of the car under brakes in a couple of spots at the northern end of the circuit, northwestern end of the circuit. This is Tim Slade. Great shot down the left side of the car. They've got a headwind today. They won't be hitting that peak speed value, but it's still mighty quick. Up the inside, car 17, and that is David Wall. Wilson Security Racing. That's the 
Oh. Amazing shot. 215 kilometres an hour as they top that little rise. And the braking area into five is always unbalanced. That's why when McLaughlin and Van Gisbergen were together on the previous or the opening lap, to get through there together, it's pretty much a one-lane racetrack. Two cars got through, all sideways, cold tyres, and as I said, high-level driving for there, not to be contact. Looking back now from Scott McLaughlin's car, back to Garth Tanda. Tanda looks like he's got good early pace. He was almost down the inside of McLaughlin at turn one on the previous lap. So Winterbottom in behind job, Tanda, the then Lee Holdsworth just in behind there, followed by Bright, Courtney and Moffat. That's your 10. So then Gisbergen has made ground. It was an immediate jump, a great jump by McLaughlin, but it didn't go on with it. it, it basically, in the second stage of the start, Winterbottom and the rest, there was three or four really good starts, but Wing Cup's initial jump and drive away from the line was far better. That's a fair run into the side. That's Rick Kelly. Uh, it's a bit of ongoing Morse code there. And uh, Rick getting stuck right into the side of Slade. And side by side here into the right-hander is always awkward. Slade's going to escort him wide, which he has. So that's the opposite to what we saw there with McLaughlin and Van Gisbergen, because McLaughlin gave Van Gisbergen room there. Very easy to push them off that exit curb at turn five. Interesting little bit of road this. It's one of the slowest corners in Australia. Very, very low grip. And then this sort of weird run through the right hand. 155k there, and then up over the top of the hill to almost 200 kilometres an hour before you attack this double left. You can see Dahlgren Wood and Perkins battling. This is the jump. Have a look. That initial jump there for McLaughlin was very, very good. But then the second stage of the start, Wink Up got away. So did Lowndes, so did Van Gisbergen, and so did Winterbottom in behind. Here it is again looking rearward from Jamie's car. So and he made a perfect start. start. He already had 10 kilometres an hour on Scott at this point. And you can see that McLaughlin was vulnerable to Van Gisbergen down the inside, but it took until turn five before, in fact, and Gisbergen was able to actually claim that back. And this is the piece that we said. This is on board now with Mark Winterbottom. Check this out. That's Tander in the weeds, but up in front through three and four, they're alongside each other. Over the curb, sliding, didn't run into each other. Still up ahead. You can see there that McLaughlin allowed him through. Now, this is the replay outside of Rick Kelly and Slade's cars. We we're on the side of Slade when he got a bit of a bump. This is the replay. Check this out. Bang. There's a little Miss an Altima. That second part was pretty costly then for Tim. Had to get out of the throttle. Category technical Go manager on. Frank Adamson in conversation there with Adrian Burgess at the Holton Racing Team. That's Rob Starr's head that we can see in the bottom right hand side of screen. Leader at the moment is Winkup. He's got 0.8 of a second on his teammate who's got 1.2 seconds on Shane Van Gisbergen. Garth Tander, more races at this racetrack than any other. There are three drivers in the field that have done all 16 previous events. Tander, Lowndes and Ingle, but only Garth has done all 44 races. The others have had a couple of no-shows with engine dramas. So, uh, great record for Tander, and it's included three wins on the journey as well. He likes the racetrack. They all do. It's a fun racetrack, lots of challenges in it. When you've got a track with a 265k top speed on the straight, and a first gear left-hander that gets you down to 60 or below in the valley in the middle of the place. It gives you an idea of the range on this racetrack. <laughs> Surface changes are hard to manage. There's one There's right on the gear change. Here's another one. Little grooves in the road that just dip the front of the car. There's another one coming up very shortly, approaching the final corner. Here it is, watch. Bang, right there. And it's right where you want to get brake pressure on, and it's at the same time where you want to start to roll steering lock onto the car and weights the inside front wheel. So there's a real tendency to lock a brake there as well, unless you treat the brake pedal carefully. Here's Scotty Pie, car 16. He's got a good battle going with Will Davison at the moment. And did you see that? There's an interesting speed comparison there when we're on board with Winterbottom because for the guy who's leading the championship, he hasn't qualified that well in terms of... He hasn't had a pole position in 2014. So you think normally that would be converse in terms of being at the front of the field and making sure that you got the best result. But the thing about Winterbottom is that he has had great race pace. And now you can see him now forging his way up onto the back of Tanda. They've probably been the benchmark car in terms of race pace across the year. 
So looking here at Scotty Pye in 15. Dick Johnson Racing, Wilson Security, one of the teams that didn't test in the break between Perth and Darwin. In fact, a quick shout out to Steve Amos from their engine department. Great guy, well known up and down pit lane. He's been unwell. Everybody at Dick Johnson Racing and in the entire V8 supercar community wishing you well, Steve. We want to see you back here very soon. So Pye's been busy on the mountain bike. Didn't get behind the wheel of the Falcon, but he's been doing lots of training. We're looking from his rear bumper at the moment. Coming on to the front straight. Great work. Will Davison having a bit of a battle getting that AMG Benz onto the straight cleanly yeah, there. The fastest lap of the race. A new one's just been set by Jamie Winkup. A 111.6. He's got a one second margin over Lowndes. They're in a bit of a holding pattern, but Slade does get successfully down the inside and moves up a spot. We'll take a break. Be back in a moment. Copy that, mate. Let's just drive it nice and straight, please. Nice and straight. Everyone's starting to complain about tyres. Let's just keep our eyes forward. Nice and patient for me, please. What I'm doing. We're in Darwin at the top end, Sky City Triple Crown. Race number 17 of the championship, Super Sprint Saturday, V8 Supercars on seven, the mega wall. There's Ryan Madison from Erebus Motorsport in the middle at the top of your shot. And we've got it covered in all departments, race control, curb cams, on board with the drivers. This is Rick Kelly, we're looking over his shoulder. Fifth gear approach into that right-hander in the middle at turn five here, it's down to 95 kilometers an hour in second gear through this corner and then it's up into the valley and uh, Rick at the moment is in 18th place that's Will Davison just in front right behind him at the moment is David Wall position number 19 big acceleration first second third through the right hand and then it's very delicate use of the throttle before you grab fourth pretty much at the scene in the road going in it very briefly you can see how hard the right rear tyre in particular works around here, constantly turning left, left, left. And it's right here where you need to really support the car. The car came on nice and cleanly then, there was no evidence of oversteer. That was Rick looking down at where his rear anti roll bars are positioned. All that data is available on the MoTeC readout on the steering wheel of the car. And uh, with the headwind, you can break a little bit deeper down there than you'd like. Bit of understeering evidence there with Will Davison's car through turn one. The changing wind conditions here is something you've really got to track at this location. So the leader at the moment with just over one second is Jamie Winkup. Uh, on lap 10 of 35, Craig Lowndes, his teammate, Red Bull Racing Australia second. Then VIP Pet Food, Shane Van Gisbergen is third. 
Robert Dahlgren cut him 34s down in 23rd, but his teammate Scotty McLaughlin is fourth at the moment. As always, there's huge battles going on up and down this field. These blokes, including Dale Wood and Jack Perkins, they are at the tail of the field. Uh, 19 odd seconds off the lead. It just goes to show that that track position so vital in your determining your start order. You give away so much time early in the race when you start down the order, and it's very hard to recover it, even if you've got a quick car. And you just end up in the battle, don't you? So you're actually dicing with each other, which even if you're at the front of the field, slows you down. But that. that tends to just drag the field out and as you can see there's battles going on everywhere quick story funny one in relation to the man at the right hand side of screen there car 36 michael caruso we know he's a character does a lot of work for us on v8 extra on seven has breakfast here this morning you know you're in the top end when all of a sudden he lets out an almighty blood curdling shriek and jumps to his feet a little green frog was on his shoulder but he thought it was another reptile so the team all day have been absolutely hammering michael caruso every time they walk past him they go look out mate so they're into him he's not thinking about that at the moment but i did get a giggle out of the story <laughs> attack of the killer frog Battling at the moment with his teammate James Moffat there, 11th and 12th. Right behind them is Dave Reynolds, who was so competitive here last year. You take it back a year, remember there's that drama with Mark Winterbottom and David Reynolds throughout the course of the race. Would you like to go for a ride, Scafi? Yes. Just under three kilometres, 14 turns. Davey Reynolds, two pole positions here last year. It's set back for us to crank up the aircon and have a look at this. track popo it's just it's got a little bit of everything and you can see there that dave reynolds car is a little bit better than caruso's in a couple of spots this braking area is the one i keep making reference to it's so difficult to get this right it's pretty wild with dahlgren percat running into each other in a straight line then wood sneaks in between those two cars i always say there's no real need there's jimmy richards one of the all-time greats he's actually driving the touring car masters this weekend always very interested as to what's going on his son steve who won bathurst last year with mark winterbottom has moved across to drive with craig lounge their recent test steve did a great job he was only a couple of tenths slower than craig at willowbank so uh, they look like they're going to be a very strong combination come october looking at this battle here we've got lee holdsworth who's doing a nice job in position seven bright in eighth in car eight then it's James Courtney and Fabian Coulthard. Fabian's qualified better for the next event. Rob Starr on the radio to James Courtney. Took the Northern Territory Chief Minister for a run yesterday and a drama here. Will Davison in the pit lane. Smoke emanating from the car. We'll find out why as quickly as we can. Doesn't look good. He was having a bit of a battle, it looked like, in car balance early in the race in those shots that we saw a lot of push, a lot of understeer in the car. Back to this little battle, just at the tail end of the top ten. He right looks like he's holding us up, but Holdsworth at the moment, Rob Starr was saying to, to James Courtney, Holdsworth's holding up, just be patient, mate. There's a big train of cars forming there at the moment. Fancy footwork from James Courtney on the right-hand side of screen. That little 
tap with the left foot's just to make sure that he's got brake pedal pressure and just to pressure it up, just to push the pistons in the brake calipers up and give him a nice firm pedal when he does grab it. They can rattle back in the caliper over the curbs. Funny how cars have got their own strengths and weaknesses. You look here at Lee, there are different spots where he actually gets away despite being under pressure in other areas of the racetrack. It's being pursued by Jason Bright at the moment, one of the most experienced drivers here, who's got a lap record, a qualifying record and a practice record. He's won here on a couple of occasions. He's done 41 races coming into this event, putting the blowtorch on Lee Holdsworth there at the moment. It's encouraging to see Erebus doing so well. This has been an emerging trend in the recent race meetings. When you look through the thread, all oh, bright, big lockup. That was nasty. Only just got it stopped. Probably put a mark on that Dunlop tyre then, I'd suggest. We're exiting the slowest corner, out of there about 65 kilometres an hour. And then battling for drive traction. Meanwhile, at the front, Wing Cup has a 1.8 second lead over Lowndes. Van Gisbergen, and McLaughlin tandem with Winterbottom, Holdsworth, Bright, Courtney and Fabian Coulthard. And that little shot off turn 10 there a moment ago, looking at Lee Holdsworth, or turn 11, I should say. You could just see him catching the car in the slide as he came off the corner. So he's doing everything in his power at the moment not to load that right rear tyre. Try and keep that steering as neutralised as possible, as gentle on the throttle. They're all very, very conscious with 20 laps remaining of just how much work they've got to do to make tyres live around here, Rihanna. Will Davison, it looked like it was a pretty tough race out there for you and obviously a disappointing way to, uh, to start the day. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty ordinary. Yeah, very disappointing. So I've actually got no idea what happened. It's obviously uh, all of a sudden a big plume, plume of smoke in the mirror. Uh, there's no noise, no bang, so I assume it's some form of oil line or something that's come off. So, uh, yeah, I just bought it straight in. We were having a tough run, actually. Um, yeah, really struggling with the balance out there, so you could say it put me out of my misery, but, uh, you know, we always need points another race this afternoon that's the only positive that you've got to come out of this situation oh, always positives yeah we actually did two extreme things with both cars to try and get a direction for the Sabo and tomorrow so we are trying lots of things <laughs> it wasn't pretty then I was being smart and patient waiting for the end to hope uh, we'd come home strong but uh, <laughs> I was hurting out there a little bit just no grip it was like I was driving in the wet so um, anyway that's very unfortunate though good luck for the second one thanks cheers Will Davis and Erebus Motorsport that confirms what we thought yeah. that the balance of the car wasn't up to snuff Came into this weekend 12th in the championship. He's qualified fourth and had a fourth in the Tasmanian round. But at the moment, we've got a bit of pressure on here between Lowndes and Van Gisbergen. We'll sneak off to a very quick break, come back and see what the outcome of this little battle is very shortly.
We're back in Darwin. Great crowd enjoying all the action. It's a 3.4 second margin for Wind Cup. Is he chasing win number four? Can he nail it? Hey, we're staying in the sun. In two weeks' time, the Castrol Townsville 500, driven by TAFE Queensland. There's an extra 100 k's of V8 supercar racing. Two 125s on the Saturday, 250 on the Sunday. There's a scary <laughs> thought. Are those teeth clean? Uh, there's extra viewing mounds, grandstands. Vanessa Amorossi, Jessica Mowboy are going to perform for us up at Townsville. We love being at that event and love escaping the south at this time of the year. Escape in a word also that I was given earlier in the day is Sirame Wine's got a ladies lounge there so you can escape during the day for a, for a, a little sip and a bit of relaxation. So I reckon there's half a chance I'll be dragging you out of there backwards <laughs> by about midday. So that's in two weeks' time, so stay with us for that one. It's going to be big. Right now, the focus, though, is about these guys on screen and we've got Garth Tander in fifth position at the moment, the Holden Racing Team. He's 8.1 seconds behind the race leader, Jamie Wincup. It's Wincup, Lounge, Van Gisberg and McLaughlin, Tander, who I just spoke of. This little warfare that's going on at the back of the pack continues between Dahlgren and Dale Wood and uh, they're playing for keeps. Actually, it doesn't make a lot of sense, quite frankly, but that's what they're doing. And here it is again from the other angle, just to confirm the silliness. So neither one of them, uh, this has been ongoing and uh, not sufficient room being left there and uh, too much of that stuff. And uh, the good folks in race control have got televisions as well. They do keep a close eye on all that. So there might be a little trip to the headmaster at the end of this one. I would say for sure. This is a great battle. Winterbottom has been right behind Tanda for the whole race. Garth has dropped off McLaughlin a little bit. So his speed's not quite as good on the previous lap. He was just in the early 13s, so he's about three or four tenths of a second slower than the lead guys. But Winterbottom just can't find a way by, and this battle still is red hot with Van Gisberg and right behind Lounge. You can see Lounge has bumped those tyres coming onto the front straight really hard. You see that it's bent the front air down and bent the front guard. Lounge's car is showing evidence, and we've seen this on occasion of sliding. You look at the, yes, I can see on the front left guard there the join between the splitter and the actual guard. There's an air gap that's open. But Craig's car's wagging the tail at the moment. So Van Gisbergen is on him. Right on him. Looking for the benefit of the draft. 250, 255, 260, 265. He looks, but tucks back in. And there's the mark that Mark spoke on. Sounds like a stutter. But there's a bit of a tyre scuff on there. That's the tyre bundle coming onto the straight, which is quite a heavy tyre bundle. And that was telling, looking at that shot. Coming off turn one, because Lowndes used every last millimetre. Not a, a skerrick of road left, but for Van Gisbergen, positioned the car tight and shallow, drove it clean and neat, no evidence of sliding at all. So Craig's getting the elbows up a bit here at the moment, and Van Gisbergen is eventually going to slice and dice here. Well, one of the things that's, that's a drama is that it's not necessarily the run that he's getting on the straight because we saw a little bit of that toe effect, but it's the heat soak. So when you're in behind another car in Darwin, the engine temperature, or even all the temperatures, the air temperature, underbonnet temperature, cabin temperature, brake temperature, tyre temperature, everything is incredibly hot. And when you've got the intake air temperature as high as it is, when you're right behind another car, it does affect the engine speed. And therefore, the normal toe that you would get at a normal racetrack, the ambient conditions affect that. You don't actually get anywhere near that toe that you would normally see. You can see it right now, you're in the toe, you're in the slipstream. You're just getting a little bit of effect, but not much, only about half to three quarters of a car length. On a normal straight in colder conditions, you would expect to see two or three car lengths if you got that sort of run. We raised the question mark just prior to the start of the race about the brakes on Scotty McLaughlin's car. Looks like he's hanging in nicely there at the moment. He's still only four and a half seconds off the lead. This argument between red and blue continues here at the moment. It's Tanda v Winterbottom. Winterbottom looks like he's got pace at the moment. Tries to force a gap up the inside. Not quite there. A little bit of rubbing contact, but not much. Just a tap tap. Coming into this weekend, Excluding those two qualifiers we've just been through. Winterbottom's a remarkable record here. 11 of the last 12 races he's qualified inside the top five. That's handsome. And nine of the last 12 races here, he's uh, been on the podium. Oh, Lee Holdsworth. Finally, under pressure, that mistake at the bottom of the straight. That lets Bright go through, and in fact, so did Coulthard. 
board with Courtney. James almost followed him. I was about to say, oh, there's, uh, there's a bit of me too in all that, because Jason Bright had his hand up to buy some as well. Yeah, they were all in trouble. Yeah, they were all out of control. Yeah. Okay, boys and girls, hands up who'd like to tour the paddock. <laughs> Mark Dutton, team engineer here at Red Bull Racing Australia. This is fantastic. Both Jamie and Craig back up one, two in this race. It's great for you guys to be back up the front. It is, but there's still a, a lot of racing laps to go. So it's, uh, it's quite nerve wracking actually, because it's getting to the point where the tire life will really start to play a part. So uh, fingers crossed uh, the boys are doing a great job that they stay up there. What's happened over the last five weeks? I know you had a very important test day out at Queensland Raceway. What's really changed back at the workshop and uh, between the last couple of race events? Yeah, we had a, had a crucial test day. We, we could have had it a bit earlier, possibly. Um, and it was just understanding. We just worked hard to not uh, reinvent the wheel, but really understand what we think is going to make these cars tick in general and up here. The really important question that everyone wants to know is what did Roland buy Craig for the big 4-0 birthday today? I mean, I haven't seen anything apart from a race suit that says 40, so he might have been a bit cheap there, so you better give him some grief. Hopefully he'll just get a podium finish for this one, and that would be uh, surpassing up. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Thanks, Dado. Cheers, Rihanna. Craig Lounce just managed to take a little bit of the heat out in the last couple of laps from Van Gisbergen, and, and, and equally he's been able to steady down the car. It's just running in a straighter line at the moment than it was a few laps ago. Here we are again with uh, Winterbottom and Tanda. This is the battle for fifth and sixth that we made reference to earlier. I asked Jamie after his uh, test, you know, whether it was a valuable outing. He said, we got a really good solid day, lots and lots of kilometres and a lot of data. He said, what we do with that data is another question, but we certainly got some value out of it. And I think today they're answering the question that it was pretty valuable. We think it's a power steering drama, by the way, that sidelined Will Davison. Quick break, back at the tick. the last 10 laps, nice, smooth, straight, no mistakes, get all your marks. The temperature's rising in the battle between Garth Tanner and Mark Winterbottom. It's fifth and sixth at the moment. We're on lap 26 of 35, and these two have had a great battle in the last several laps. In fact, coming off the final corner on the last lap, Winterbottom gave Tanda just a little touch-up coming onto the straight, so it's very close. Bit of aggravation here and there. And a rubber strip's just come off Todd Kelly's car. Uh, Todd's down the order in 19th there at the moment. That's deposited itself in the middle of the racetrack. Super slow-mo replay of Shane Van Gisbergen getting a bit of air up 
at turn 10, that new curve profile up there, and you can see that gap has opened up ever so slightly between Lowndes and Van Gisbergen. So a bit of the pressure's just come out of that battle. And here's that touch-up that I spoke of a moment ago between Frosty and Garth Tander coming onto the straight. Just gives him a little love bite as Garth's about to put the power down. It looked more downing from this angle. And the two of them shot down the straight. Didn't exchange positions. But Garth is well and truly aware of the fact that Frosty's there. In fact, at the moment, Garth's on for equal best result of the season. He was fifth in one of the races in New Zealand. He's fifth in the racetrack at the moment. But he's just having to hang on a little bit, it seems, relative to Winterbottom, who's got a bit of pace but struggling to use it right now. Hey, Frosty's feeling a little bit hot under the collar. We've got the answer, and he'll know this is waiting for him. This is Frosty's ice bath. It is currently set at 10 degrees Celsius. Think about these temperatures for a minute. It is high 30s outside at the moment. It's over 60 degrees Celsius inside the car. This is 10 degrees. And just putting your hands in, you can feel how cold that is. That is going to be a major body shock. But on a day when we're talking about driver recovery and driver fatigue, it is so crucial that the drivers get in and out of the car and recover before the next race. This is the secret. All of the drivers will come out of the car, straight to the back of the garage, into the A trailers and into the ice baths to cool down and recover before the next race. I bet Frosty's thinking about this right now, guys. <laughs> I bet he is too, Brett. In fact, you were in cold conditions through the week and the last couple of days, so... I'm big, to get back in, Scobie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Big transfer of temperature for you from... Uh, New Queenstown. Zealand, exactly Ooh. from Queenstown to Darwin. Body shock. And, exactly, and that'll be what Mark Winterbottom experiences at the end of this race. We were the first to do that in about, I reckon about year 2000, we first started to do that. And when you do dive in, it's pretty wild. <laughs> Takes the breath away. So here's this seesaw battle going on between Tander and Winterbottom. Both of them with vast experience case of who blinks at the moment. Tander looks like the car is just slipping around underneath him a little bit more than he'd ideally like. But because of the amount of experience he's got, he knows where to position the car. He knows how to stop sliding it. He's done 492 V8 supercar races, and the bloke that's taking us for a ride at the moment has done 326. Grant McPherson, Frosty's engineer, saying, keep the pressure up. He's well aware. Actually, he was on the hard cut on the red limiter there at 7.5. Well, that stops you. So when you get to that, you can't go any faster. So that actually affects the ability to get down the inside. He's going to have to do it somewhere else. And Tander will be sizing all this up as well. The bit that I love about these contests, these two guys, absolute pros. They're driving 10 tenths. They're driving to the millimeter. It's all slowed down in their minds. They know exactly where they need to position the car. They know what they can and can't get away with in terms of brakes and tyre wear. And the cars are nothing like they were in qualifying. They're running around at the moment in high, mid to high 11s, so they've lost a pile of sting in grip, but they still read the cars. They still know where to brake at the last possible moment, where and how to apply the throttle. And they're fighting back everything that's working against them. The super soak of the additional temperature going into the front of Frosty's car, for example. It breaks even in a good day here at the bottom of the straighter at 950 degrees. He's got another tonne and a half in front of him that generates heat just to add insult to injury. Tyres get worse with every lap. There, mate. Great job. Six laps to run. It's been a very impressive performance with wind cover. 13.08 on that lap. He's half a second faster than anybody else in the field with a 4.5 second lead over Lowndes. Lucker? Well, just to expand on what Neil was saying, and you were saying earlier, Mark, about the airflow at the front of the cars. So here is some Ford Performance Racing parts. Let's just keep an eye on that battle in the background. So here's Mark's brakes. This is his front brake, 395 across diameter. Here's a rear one. If I put that on top, you can see they're somewhat smaller. They're 355. Now, remember, we've already got a little bit of bias to the front of the car in terms of our brake bias, and we rely heavily on the air ducts going in here, these exclusively supply air via these ducts into the brake discs. Now, when you're in front of a car, or behind a car, sorry, the high pressure air that builds up around here becomes disturbed, so you don't get that nice airflow. The second part of that, because these are running at about 1,000, as Neil said, these ones closer to 700, because this does have some airflow and the rear doesn't, 
these ones get a lot hotter. And when you go big stop at turn one, big stop at turn two, and then go down into the hairpin, it's very, very hard to pull the car up because these haven't had airflow over the top of them. It makes it very, very critical for car balance. Yeah, good pick up, Larko. That's um, a very good explanation of the problem that Mark Winterbottom's experiencing behind Garth Tander. And when that heat soak happens to your car, you put, almost put yourself in a position where you really can't attack at turn one. This is probably the area that he's going to have to focus on. Just here, over the little rise and down the inside into five. That's one of the spots. He gave him a little bump then. He's actually done a really nice job off this exit. And this is the next spot. So it's five or six will be the two areas that he looks like he's got a little margin over Tanda. And it's only very small, so he's going to have to judge it very carefully. And you've got to think about risk-reward here in this as well. So well, back to this battle between Lowndes and Bad Gisberg. We'll come back to Frosty and Tanda because this one's livened back up once again. Van Gisbergen has perhaps given the tyres a little rest and he's having another crack at Lowndes. At the moment, it's a Red Bull 1-2. 4.9 seconds is the gap. Wind Cup to Lowndes. You can see the gap back to the Volvo there as well. And then Tanda. You can barely see Frosty, who's still tucked in under the rear wing of the Holden. Now he has a look. It's just limited by the fact that the car is literally out of breath at that point down there. He's oh, got he's it. up it. He's done it. He's got up the inside, but Tanda's still going to hold what will become the inside line when they get oh, when they get to that right-hander. We've seen cars go around the nose of other cars there in years gone by. Frosty again, the assault. Tries to go down the inside, can't get it done. This is a great contest. When you're the series leader, what you said before... Yep. Risk big, and reward. Exactly. Big championship drama. If you end up in a major incident or a serious problem with wheel contact with Tanda. If you're going to make a pass, you've got to make a really authoritative, proper manoeuvre. If he gets past, uh, past Garth Tanda, it'll be uh, 55 points for a fifth. Where he is at the moment for Frosty, it's 51 points. So the argument is worth four points. We've seen championships decided by less than that in the modern era. So they all know how important it is to make margin, but you can't afford to tip it off the road. No doubt. Look at this great vision. The two guys sliding the cars across the top of the hill at turn 10. Van Gisbergen was on the curb. Lowndes had missed the curb and he was out sideways. As this battle resumes, it has just been so intense with these two guys the whole race. Tanda has not got quite the car pace. He's held Winterbottom up. Winterbottom can't find a way by. He's had a go at five. He's had a go at six. He's had a go at one. He's actually had a little go at turn 14 when he made contact with Tanda. This is on board at five. As he comes out, he just a little bit too much wheel spin. This is where he made contact last year. Gee, almost, he almost drilled the back of Tanda's car there. That's where he made contact with Dave Reynolds last year. That had the makings of a big dive bomb then, didn't it? Held my breath for a moment. Here we go back to Bright, Courtney, Coulthard. Seven, eight, nine. And there's a little gap back to Lee Holdsworth. Remember that Lee went wide down at turn one. He's recovered. There he is, a little glimpse of him. We're riding with James Courtney. This is turn 10. So not a bad run here for the Holden Racing Team. Fifth at the moment for Garth Tanner in car number two and Courtney in eighth, car number 22. Just behind Holdsworth, who we saw him go off the end of the main straight, which... Bright and Courtney almost went with him. So Holdsworth did get back on, so he's 10th. But James Moffat, the first of the Nissans, with Caruso still right behind him, they're at 11th and 12th. So five manufacturers in the top 11 cars. Lee Holdsworth did a good job to recover and resume, which is just at the back of the shot there now as he comes through that little roller coaster. It's one of the best corners in Australian motorsport with a little change of direction, a little rise, a little bump before turn five, and very fast, 215 kilometres an hour, slowing the car to 95 kilometres an hour. This is a replay of a big brake lock there for Van Gisbergen. You can see they all use the inside kerb because what it does, it tucks the car in. And there's two different lines on the exit. Some guys run right out past the exit kerb and use the concrete apron on the exit, and some don't use the exit curb at all, so some make a very narrow exit, 
and some make a very wide exit at turn six. Less than 2.8 kilometres to run now. Final lap of the race. We go back on board with Pepsi Max Ford Performance Racing. Mark Winterbottom, last ditch, desperate attempt to have a look down the inside. He nearly ran himself wide. They're both absolutely on the mat here. Nothing left. Tander is fifth. Winterbottom is sixth. They're 16 odd seconds away from the lead of the motor race. Wind Cup's got it stitched up. He's going to advance his cause. Important points for him. Remember, there's another race to come later this afternoon. And then it's double the points tomorrow and double the distance, 200 kilometres. Tanda clinging on to this spot at the moment. Here's our leader. 4.9 seconds at the last measure. Fantastic performance. Once again, Wind Cup has done a brilliant job. 320 second race and 79 wins. Well done, Jamie Wind Cup. His teammate Craig Lowndes gets home in second. 4.3 seconds is the gap. Shane Van Gisbergen, VIP Pet Foods, Holden Commodore in third. And a resolution to this battle falls in favour of Garth Tander. Then it's Winterbottom, then Bright, then Courtney, then Coulthard on screen there. Lee Holdsworth, the tiny mistake, but nice work to come in 10th. Top 10 results, always a good thing. Then it's James Moffat, Michael Caruso, Dave Reynolds, Chaz Mostert, Scott Pye, Tim Slade. It's the top 16 cars and Red Bull Racing Australia in full celebration mode. This was a good drive. Winterbottom knows you're leading the championship. It was only worth four points to fire down the inside of Garth Tander. And at the end, I thought it was quite a, a composed, professional approach from Winterbottom not to make a mistake there. This man did not make a mistake at all. Made a brilliant start and drove the car very, very straight. Did not hurt the rear tyres. Impeccable drive. For win number four of 2014, he's got more wins against his name now than any other so far this season. He's jumped clear of Frosty and Craig Lowndes. Gasses it up. Cracks the door open to get a little bit of air through there. And a bit of freestyling to come back and say hi to the boys. Seven victories. V8 supercar victories for the Red Bull Racing Australia team so far in 2014 between the teammates. Oh, oh there the goes door's the... open. <laughs> that could have been bad. The door came open, then it flung back open and it was going to hit those tyres on the right. We joked at V8 Extra earlier in the day about the, you know, the, the antics post-race. <laughs> Donuts and fences, and that just about took out a driver's yeah, door. Concrete. It's not going to diminish from the drive, though. It was a great job. Took a break. Had a week off in Bali. Had a successful test. Gathered a lot of data. Went back, revisited the job. Thought about the task. Poured through the data. It was an intense beginning of the 2014 championship season these guys have uh, upped the level once again so win cup and lounge victorious and a 4.35 margin between two of them they acknowledge each other and then shane van gisbergen making it holden one two and three volvo four another holden followed by the first ford mark winterbottom not a bad birthday present for the old boy there exactly he'd be he'd be happy with that that was a good drive in fact I would have said at about lap 15 that Van Gisbergen was definitely going to get Lowndes. That was a good fight back by Craig I was to maintain sure, but, that. Yeah, yeah. It looked like he was in tons of trouble, but sometimes the cars can trend differently also as the race goes, or you can adjust the bars and dig your way out of it, and Lowndes has been able to do it. Let's get down there and celebrate. Yeah, and please celebrate too, Neil. Jamie Wincup, congratulations. Exactly when you needed it at this time of the year, you got the win. Well done. Yeah, a really good start to a to a hot, um, hot, big hot weekend, but um, both cars were, were clearly good. We've made some improvements over the uh, over the mini break, which is nice. So hopefully we can keep this momentum through to the end of the year. Mark Dutton said you had a great test day. It's obviously produced some fruit for you. Yeah, we just, we were running, you know, mid pack, and we had a few few up and down rounds. So um, we don't like doing that. So we really put our head down, and everyone's done a really good job actually. They've taken a bit of a risk, and um, you know, it's, it's paid off. So still a long way to go, but we've certainly improved from the start of the year. Yeah, it's a great result positive outcome and we've got a magnificent trophy to present to you too Jamie congratulations pop that on the mantelpiece at home uh, speaking of trophies Craig Lowndes congratulations 40th birthday and a great way to celebrate on the podium here with us well done yeah thanks Barrett. I think that I uh, made a mistake in the last corner 
which uh, you know damaged the car a little bit, but it wasn't. Uh, you know, we just didn't have the pace of Jamie today, and he did a great job. Got a good start. We managed to get a good, so a good start and get into second position. We had a great uh, battle with Gizzy here, but uh, look, you know, it's a great, uh, it's a credit to the team. We've had a test day, we've turned things around, but I think as Jamie said, it's not over yet. We've still got another race, another one, big one tomorrow. So uh, fingers crossed, it all goes the same way. Big bounce back for you guys. Well done, Craig. Enjoy the trophy and congratulations. And Shane Van Gisbergen, who's been quick all weekend. Great sessions yesterday, uh, Shane, for you, and you've delivered again in this race. Well done on third place. Yeah, we had a great start. Craig and I moved forward and had a great battle with Scotty on the first lap. Didn't even have to wave my middle finger at him, but um, yeah, awesome race. And with Craig, I was a little bit quicker, but um, yeah, he just put his car in all the right places. Not blocking, just good positioning, and uh, it was a great battle. Really enjoyed it. So another race to Savo. Hopefully we can move forward from eighth, but um, stoked to be on the podium. Great day. Great, Shane. We're looking forward to more great racing. And the trophy for you as well for third place. Congratulations, the Sky City Triple Crown. Garth Tander, you certainly couldn't rest at all during that race. You had Mark Winterbottoms on your back the whole time. How are you feeling after that one? A little bit, uh, a little bit tired? No, no, tight, warm. Um, yeah, look, Frosty had a bit of speed on us, but probably not enough to get by. So um, we were stronger in some parts, he was stronger in others. So as long as I covered him off in those areas where he was stronger than me, we could keep him behind. So, um, yeah, it was good racing. Like, you know, he, he, he a bit of Morse code on my rear bumper a couple of times, but that's, that's part of the deal. So, um, no, it was good fun. I know there's not a lot of time between races. This is important time that you can spend with your engineers and with you guys to get the car tuned for the next race. Yeah, it is. We're going to talk a little bit about the car. Then I'm going to go get in the ice bath because it's nice and cold. So, uh, yeah, yeah, look, it's, uh, we can tune her up. I think our speed's OK. We just need the tide to live a little longer. Thanks, Gar. Cool. So let's have a look at the results after race number 17. And uh, Sky City Triple Crown's off to a great start for Jamie Wincup for 2014. 4.3 seconds was the gap to his teammate Shane Van Gisberg and Scotty McLaughlin. Nice job in the Volvo. Uh, James Moffat and his teammate Michael Caruso just outside the top 10 for Nissan. Davey Reynolds there in 13th. He'll be a bit disappointed with that. They're still searching for speed in that car. Looking further down, Wood, Dahlgren, Perkat, Jack Perkins and Will Davis. And the problem with the power steering on that car, Scafie. Yes, it got hurt early on. Here's the scenario in the points, and uh, it's tightened up, MS, so it's 83 points yeah. now between Mark Winterbottom and Craig Lowndes, so valuable points gained there in this little battle, but Winterbottom's still well and truly in control. That's a handy margin nonetheless. Fabian Coulthard, hasn't he done a brilliant job? And, of course, those extra points for Win Cup have really helped the cause. So, crowd really enjoying their V8 supercar racing up here in the top end as always. Here's the highlights of race number 17. And what a great battle it was at the start there. Wing Cup, a brilliant start to get away from McLaughlin. And they got in and around turn one. There was a great exchange with McLaughlin and Van Gisbergen. Through that area right there. A little bit of contact now with Rick Kelly and Slade coming off turn one. And there were some really good exchanges through the field. In fact, the whole field, at one stage, there was a battle right through to the final cars, which were Perkins and Dahlgren and Perkat. There was a fair bit of biffing and barging too. There was a lot of nudging and bumping. That was Dave Reynolds up in behind Michael Caruso. There was another one down here where there was a little bit of an exchange onto the straight earlier and that was Perkat, Wood and Dahlgren with Perkins right in behind them. Then that little bump, a little nudge wide by Wood, then a little retaliation by Dahlgren and a little another view of that one there, a little bit of drama there, They'll, a little bit of chat I would think in the stewards room regarding that one. And this was this great battle with Van Gisberg and, and Lowndes. We thought for sure that Lowndes was gone so great job to hang on. We also thought the Tander was gone because Winterbottom got up the inside and then they're alongside it to a little bit of a bump there, a little cheeky with Garth then just moving it across and he was able to hold off Mark Winterbottom. But this man was an impeccable drive 